prove this. So this is what I required to prove. But I also gave you a clue. I gave you an identity, a rather obvious one. But um, sometimes you don't get given that clue. And having been shown how it sort of works and the basic method, you'll be expected to sort of work out that step on your own, okay? But since we're just sort of doing this at the beginning, let me rehearse what uh, the point was. What was the um, what was the clue? I think it was one plus x to the eight, right? Yeah. And if you do that again, just by your index laws, that's equal to this. Okay. So obviously, even without knowing very much, you can see there's some connection between this and this. Like that's sixteen. That sixteen. That seems kind of um, interesting. So how can we use it? Well, let me ask you this. Noting that uh, the coefficients here, right? They're not like twos or threes or fives or anything like that. So you're just going to get Pascal's triangle, right? You're just going to get those numbers and they're not going to be skewed or adjusted by any other coefficients, yeah? So that being the case, what is the significance of this number to this series? Because right? that's an, ex it's an expansion, it's a series, right? Where does this number appear? Here. Let's start to write some of it out, shall we? Um, what do we get over, I'm going to move this to the middle of the board because that's where we need to be. When I expand out 1 plus x um, to the 16, okay, what's the very first term? 16 to 0, okay, 16 choose 0, okay, and then you just got a 1. And because it's always going to be 1, it's not even negative 1, I can just not worry about writing it. Next term, 16 choose 1, and... The x's are going up, aren't they? Because they're the second term. So x to the 1, x to the 2, and so on. Okay? So, you can see that 16 choose 8 is going to appear when I get to the x to the 8 term. That makes sense? And that's not the last term. It does keep on going all the way up to 16 choose 16, and it'll be x to the 16. That's where we finish. Okay? So, being that, I know that this 16 choose 8 is going to line up here. What I then have to do is work out, well, where does the 16 choose 8, sorry, where does the x to the 8 appear out of here, right? Now, because this is the same thing twice, I'm just going to get rid of this second one and say square it. Okay? Now, what does an expansion look like <coughs> on the left-hand side? Well, let's do this. Again, just like here, right? I'm going to get 8 choose 0, and just 1. Then 8 choose 1 and 1 lot of x. 8 choose 2 and 2 lots of x, x, right? And so on until the last term, which is 8 choose 8, right? Okay, now that whole thing is square, right? Now, even though I haven't written it, you can see that that square means there's a second row, and we've got to do that same thing we did with the red and the red, the green and the red colors before. Because some of these terms, when I match them up with the next one, I multiply it out, some of them will give me x to the 8. What kinds of combinations will give me x to the 8? Well, for instance, um, if I just say terms with um, x to the power of 8. Okay? For instance, let's start with this term over here. 8 choose 0. Okay? Because there are no x's on it, I need to pair it up with and x to the 8, right? Now that's going to be this term on the end. So I'm going to get 8 choose 0 and 8 choose 8, right? And that's going to have an x to the 8 in it, right? Moving along 1, if I choose this one, 8 choose 1, okay, it's got 1x. So I'm going to need to match it up with, maybe if I try and cram it in here, there will be an 8 choose 7, x to the 7, right? So 8 choose 7 to the 7, right? So you can see where this pattern is going, yeah? In fact, by the end, I'm, I'm going to get back to this 8 choose 8, and I'm going to say, well, which term in the first series will it match up with in the second series? And it's going to be, I'll have 8 choose 8, and that's got x to the 8, and I need to match it up with the first term of the next series, okay? Which happens to be this. And there's no x term, okay? So now because you can see, look at this term here, and this term here, right? Um, it's doubled up. Can you see that? You've got the overlap. So can you see how this relates to this? What's that mean? Um, you've got, for instance, let's actually write some of these terms out. Okay, I've got 
H two zero, that's the first instance of R. And because I'm squaring it, I've got H two zero again. Okay? Then the next one will be H choose one and H choose one again. And so on, all the way up to this. Hmm. Hold on a second. That isn't quite what we've got written here, is it? Or, or is it? Um, what identity can you use here to help you out? Can you see? Yeah, that's right. This 0 and this 8, this 1 and this 7, 2 and 6 and so on, they're all the same distance from the ends and from the middle. Okay? So I can actually write down, uh, let's see here. I really use this sort of extra working. So let's, I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. Coefficients. What are they going to be equal to? I'm just going to rewrite it so that I can justify going from here to here. Okay, is that right? So, 8 choose naught is equal to 8 choose, um, hold on, 8 minus 8. Is that okay? You see how that's, I'm going from there to there because that's the number that I've got at the top. Okay? Uh, and I just want the coefficients, so I'm going to leave off the x term. I'm going to have 8 choose 1. And then this is equal to 8 choose 8 minus 7, which is the one that I need. And so on, all the way up to here, I've got 8 choose 8 and 8 choose 8 minus 8. Again, different, wait, sorry. 8 minus 0, sorry. Thank you. Okay. So now I have my numbers exactly lining up. By the way, that's kind of a, even though I've, I've probably seen this a lot, it seems like a trivial step, okay? But because it's a show, right, you already know what you're going to get to. You can't, you can't cut out steps, okay? You've got to demonstrate you know exactly where it came from. All right, so that's h choose 0 squared, h choose 1 squared, and so on, all up to h choose 8 squared, and you can just rewrite that in sigma notation. Now probably the last thing that I need to say is, really, um, in here, I sort of got away with it by doing this. I should say, by comparison of the coefficient of x to the 8 here, that's 16 choose 8, uh, with the coefficient of x to the 8 over here, which I've just now worked out to be that, therefore, this identity is true. Okay? But can you see how I established it? All the main work is there, and the rest of it is just how you present it. Okay?